Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel here. And today I'm going to be continuing the Unity 3D tutorial series. In the previous episode we covered some basic GUI point system thing. And, yeah. Uh, I will be doing the second part in a, at a later date. And cover the scripting portion of it. Where you can do it completely from, you know, your, uh, your JavaScript or your C Sharp or whatever. But uh, in today's episode, I'll be covering like random enemy movement, or at least the start of it. So, if you've been following along, you should have something along the lines of this scene right here. So we could fire, we could kill these guys. Uh, we got the score system, and these guys come at us. If we fall off this, we'll die. So that's what we have right now. And this episode is going to be completely a script thing. Um, and it took me a while to kind of figure this all out because I had something misplaced somewhere and uh, I just kind of fixed it on accident and it worked so uh, I'll, I'll be showing you how to do that today so what you're gonna need to do first is open up your enemy movement script and this is the only script we're gonna be editing today I've got two open okay well you only need one and we're gonna start by adding in all of the variables so first we're gonna need var min Tar x, which is going to be a float, which we're going to set equal to, let's just do one for right now, and then var max tar x, which is also going to be a float, and equal at, let's set it equal to 10. Okay, var min tar y, which is a float, and set that equal to 1. And then var min, no, not min, max tar. These aren't supposed to be y's, they're supposed to be z's if we're following the, uh, the way that we want to do this. Sorry about that. And this is going to be a float, and set that equal to 10. So, if you know about like 3D graphing, you'll know that you have your X, your Y, and your Z planes. So you got your X going horizontally, um, like from left to right, and then you got your Y going up and down, and then your Z kind of like goes horizontally but like the opposite of x. So instead of left to right, it would be like forward and backwards. So considering we're not trying to get this guy to fly around and stuff, we only need to move him around on the x and the z axes. So we're going to need two more scripts, which are going to store the integers, for, well, not the integers, the floats. The floats we're going to need to randomize movement. So we're going to need tar x, which is going to be a float. A lot of floats this episode. And then var tar z. This is also going to be a float. And that's the boring part out of the way. Now we get to the fun stuff. So as of right now, if we were to hit play, all he would do is go towards us immediately. He would not do AI stuff and, you know, go other places and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement around this. So if target, so we're talking about the variable here, isn't equal to null. Okay. Just going to close it. And so what this is, the equal, the equal in the uh, exclamation point stands for isn't equal to. If we did two equals, then that means it is equal to. So we're checking to see if it, the target isn't equal to null, which means nothing. So if there is something that is being stored in the target variable, then we're calling this. If not, we're going to call an else statement. And inside the else statement, we're going to do if transform dot. Position 
function dot x is is equal to tar x. And so the two and symbols stand for and in scripting. We're gonna do the same thing for the x axis. Dot z. Yeah, not x, z. And that is going to be equal to tar z. So this is gonna to check to see if the if the enemy's position is equal to our tar variables, which is short for target, because I didn't feel like writing target x and well that would take forever. Um then we're gonna call this. And for right now we can really leave nothing in here. I'm just gonna do debug dot blog. And you can just use this to tell yourself whether things are being like if this if statement's being called, which it won't because it can never be exactly at this position. Uh, decimals and stuff like that. It will always be a little off, so it will never be able to be called unless we make some adjustments. So, this is what we're going to be doing for right now. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to type called, which we'll never see, so it doesn't matter. And then we're going to need another else statement. Basically, the only reason why we have that if statement is so we can call this else, else statement. And odds are I'll probably just remove that if statement later in a later tutorial. But for right now, just keep it there. So this is the fun part. What we're going to do is we need to take this. So it's taking the destination variable, which we have set to equal to the target dot position if it isn't equal to null. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to take two diff completely different floats and plug them in to here. So in order to do that we're going to need a new another line for this. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy all the way up to the equal sign paste it here, space, and then we're going to do new vector 3 and inside we're going to do tar x 0 tar z so what a vector 3 is is it's basically a point in 3d space and we wouldn't use a vector 2 because then that would be like a point in 2d space so considering we need the, the z variable if we did a vector 2 it would try to take the, the z variable and turn it into a y variable, so therefore it will be trying to move up, but it can't. So it would only move to the z-axis. So if we did vector 3, and we replace the y with a 0, then it will never try to go up, and it will use these two coordinates exactly. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to create two new functions. Uh, one that's already built in Unity, so func function start. And I, I don't know if I already explained function start, but it's called at the beginning of the game when the script is first called, just in case I hadn't already said. And inside here we're going to do create uh, tar point to parentheses and then close it off with a semicolon. So what this is saying is it's going to call a new function we're about to create. So you can put it wherever you want, I'm just going to put it down here function, it does help if I spell it correctly, uh, create tar, tar point. So this is our personally created function, which we're calling every time the game starts. So inside of here, we're going to put tar x is equal to random dot range and in two parentheses and inside here we're going to do min tar x comma max tar x so what this is going to do is it's going to look between our min tar x and max tar x so somewhere between 1 and 10 
anywhere with decimal places basically. So this is the reason we're using a float because a point in 3D space would be contained within a float and not an integer because you know you could have in between you know one and two on the z-axis or something like that. So we're containing it within a float and so it's going to pick a random number between one and ten and plug it into tar x. So tar x which is being called up here this is going to give us our x position and we're going to do the same thing for the z one. So we do tar Z, and we just put all these X's with Z's. Then, just referencing my script on the other monitor, that's that's it. So if we go ahead and minimize this, come back in, make sure there are no errors. This is the debug area. Okay, well, right down here, this is the debug area. So, basically, if this were to be called, then we would see called down here. But it won't be because that script will never work. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just take these enemies and deactivate them. Because I don't want them doing anything like that. And I'm just gonna keep one left. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one enemy. And consider we don't have anything to make sure that we're within his radius or whatever. We're just going to go ahead and select it to none. That'll be in the next tutorial. And so he's we're not going to be his target, so he's going to he's going to go to a random position between one and ten somewhere on this plane. So if I go ahead and hit play, everything should work. As you can see, he's moving, he's moving, and he stopped. So as you can see, his tar x is 4.05, and his tar z is 4.7. Go up here. Okay, well his z is a little off, but then again, it's probably outside of his range to travel on here, but his tar x is almost exactly the same as it would be down here. Go ahead, stop that, hit play again. He kind of moves in the same direction, but not at the same time. Now he's over here. His tar z is correct this time. His tar x is a little off, but oh well. I mean, he is moving freely, but he just seems to kind of want to come over here. So there will be some adjustments in the scripts and whatnot to kind of give it a little bit better movement. So, um, uh, yeah, I guess this is the start of random enemy movement. In the next tutorial, I'll cover him being with our player being within a specific radius of the enemy so then he'll go after us but if we're not then he'll generate a random point to go to every maybe 10 seconds or so and then he'll move on to his next random point so um yeah i'd like to thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next episodes so we've already got two new ones on the agenda random enemy movement continued and the continuation of the GUI system so, um, yeah, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and if you've got any comments, suggestions, uh, things in general, leave a comment in the section, comment section below. I'd be willing to read it. I love seeing people commenting. It makes me feel good about myself. And uh, if you really do like this tutorial, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I am trying to do a video every week, but due to end of the year projects I have at school, um, I may not be able to record every week until after June 5th, so, um, that's only a few weeks from now. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.